Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. Today we will discuss mechanism of drugs acting on respiratory system. So in this video, we will discuss different type of diseases and then different type of drugs and their action on our body. There are different diseases that are related to the respiratory system. These are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, pneumonia, bronchitis, pulmonary fibrosis, allergic cough, tuberculosis, which is commonly called as TB, viral infection like COVID-19 and some other infections lung cancer and also some bacterial infections like pneumonia. Drugs affecting respiratory system are antitussive agents are drugs, bronchodilator drugs, cholinergic antagonists, anti-inflammatory or anti-allergic agents, expectorants, nasal decongestants, antihistamines, xanthines and methylxanthines that are derivatives of xanthines antiviral and antibacterial medicine which are used as chemotherapeutic of all we will discuss what are antitussive drugs and what is the mechanism of action of antitussive drugs antitussive drugs are cough suppressant drugs so when we take these type kind of drugs the, the cuff is suppressed. The examples are dextromethorphan, benzonitate, codeine and falcodine. So these are different type of drugs that binds on different receptors and their mechanism of action is different from each other. So in here we will discuss the mechanism of action of these drugs. So if we look at the epithelium of our lungs there are mechano and chemoreceptors inside that epithelium so when there is foreign infection or some allergen binds to these uh, cells which are dendritic cells or the mucus is secreted they causes uh, activate mechano or chemoreceptors and then this nerve impulse is passed and sensory neurons take that uh, receptor the signal of their receptors to the medulla oblongata where medulla oblongata uh, which is the which is present in hind brain so it has quick action which is also uh, called as reflex action so it uh, causes provide signals to the sensory neurons which uh, go to the respiratory muscles and causing cough. So here the drugs which are peripherally acting antitussive drugs they inhibit these receptors at the epithelium. For example benzonitate so this kind of medicine binds with these receptors and it inhibits the signal transfer from this epithelium uh, through the sensory neurons to medulla oblongata and in this way the cuff is suppressed while there are some centrally active antitussive drugs that uh, that have different action and they are actually they bind with the opioid receptors uh, which are present in uh, motor neurons and sorry so motor neurons like codeine and falcodeine and they inhibit these opioid receptors uh, in which are present here and they block the action of neurotransmitter uh, which are which causes the transmission of nerve impulse uh, through this synaptic junction so in this way these drug binds with these receptors and block that receptors and in this way the signal is not transferred from uh, medulla oblongata to respiratory muscles and in this way the cuff is suppressed Second kind of medicines are bronchodilators. Bronchodilators are beta-2 agonists in which 
which includes salbutamol, salmitrol, or valentirol. And second is anticholinergic drugs, which are ipratropium, aglidinium, glycopyronium, and theophyllines. So all these are bronchodilators and they have different action from each other. So when we look at the mechanism of action of bronchodilators, which is usually uh, used in asthma and chronic coronary obstructive pulmonary disease. So here we have bronchial muscles or bronchi and uh, in this direction it will be relaxed and this is the direction in which they are constricted. So if we look at the mechanism beta agonists or beta antagonists sorry beta agonist that activates adenyl cyclase which converts AMP or ATP to cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Cyclic adenosine monophosphate activates uh, this bronchi relaxation. While here we have phosphodiesterase enzyme, I have written here, so phosphodiesterase enzyme uh, converts cyclic adenosine monophosphate to adenosine monophosphate and here theophylline will bind with the phosphodiesterase and it will inhibit the action of phosphodiesterase and thus they, uh, it will not reduce the quantity of cyclic adenosine monophosphate which is the cause of bronchial relaxation. In second case in which there is bronchial constriction. So in this case the acetylcholine activates the constriction. So when acetylcholine is present it causes the constriction of bronchial muscles or bronchi. Similarly leukotrienes and adenosine. So these three factors are the affecting which causes the constriction of bronchi. So the drugs which are muscarinic antagonist, muscarinic receptors are, are that receptors where acetylcholine neurotransmitter binds. So muscarinic receptors will be blocked by muscarinic antagonists and thus they will stop the bronchial constriction. Similarly, in leukotrienes, the leukotriene antagonists will bind and they will inhibit the function of leukotrienes. And the theophylline which, uh, which, which has the action like here, it inhibits phosphodiesterase. It's, it has also function that it inhibits the function of adenosine and in this way they stop the bronchial constriction. So in this way these three kind of medicine uh, will act on uh, to stop the bronchial constriction while these two beta agonist and theophylline uh, increases the bronchial uh, relaxation. Drugs used for lung inflammation. There are three different kind of drugs that are used for lung inflammation. These are antihistamines. Antihistamines includes loratidine, citrazine and there are some other medicine that <coughs> inhibits the formation of histamine. <coughs> The second kind of drugs are anti-leukotrienes which enable leukotrienes production such as Montilocost which is commercially available uh, drug in case of uh, uh, Montica. Corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are cortisones, prednisone and fluticasone. So these kind of uh, medicines are corticosteroids. Now we are going to study the action of different drugs. Like here, mechanisms of drugs acting on inflammation, asthma, or coronary obstructive pulmonary disease. So when allergen uh, comes to bind here in dendritic cells, which is present in the epithelium cell, they sig uh, they signals inside the cell and the antigen presenting cell presents that antigen on their surfaces and in this case the native T cells which are uh, T lymphocyte cells that binds with that antigen and they activates T helper cells. 
e helper cells uh, releases interleukin 4 interleukin 3 interleukin 5 so when these t cells uh, releases interleukin 4 they activate b lymphocyte cells and b lymphocyte cell causes the production of uh, antibodies which is ige from the plasma cells and the drug which is used to inhibit is monoclonal antibody umalizumab so umalizumab is used to uh, inhibit that uh, production of these antibodies which are causes of inflammation the second is interleukin 3 interleukin 3 causes the mast cell to produce histamine prostaglandins platelets activating factor and leukotrienes so these mast cells secretes histamines so to decrease so all these are the factors that causes inflammation so to decrease the function of uh, this uh, inflammation antihistamines are used such as cetirizine to inhibit the production of histamine and prostaglandins which are 20 carbon carboxylic acids which are arachid arachidinoic acids so they are produced from arachidonic acids and uh, platelets activating factor and leukotrienes so Montelo cast inhibits the formation of leukotrienes so it is anti-leukotriene drug so in this way the production or the uh, synthesis of these inhibited and thus the inflammation uh, is reduced T helper cells also secrete interleukin 5 interleukin 5 binds with eosinophil and eosinophil uh, secretes the ECP MBP peroxidase and leukotrienes so these are the different components uh, which are produced from eosinophils and there are some medicines which bind to or inhibit the production of peroxidases or leukotrienes like anti-leukotriene monocomantilocast so it will inhibit that function and in this way the inflammation is reduced role of corticosteroids in inflammation so corticosteroids have different role than anti-inflammatory drugs so they either binds to the structural cells or inflammatory cells and they perform different function like here if they uh, bind with epithelial cells they reduces the production of cytokines they also in endothelial cell they also reduce the production of endothelial cells in airway smooth muscles they activates beta 2 receptors or they inhibit cytokine production in mucus glands they inhibit the secretion of mucus or they reduces the mucus secretion in case of inflammatory cells they reduces the number of eosinophils which which causes which produces different uh, the components like uh, peroxidases or leukotrienes so they uh, reduces the eosinophils which also causes apoptosis t lymphocytes t lymphocytes produces cytokines which are also inflammatory so they reduces cytokines so that the apoptosis will be stopped cytokines uh, actually uh, causes apoptosis or cell death mast cells they also reduces mast cells so mast cells in our previous slide we studied that mast cell produces histamine prostaglandins platelets activating factor and leukotrienes so they are also involved in inflammation so they reduces the number of mast cells they also reduces the number of uh, macrophages and dendritic cells so dendritic cells also produces mucus secretion so they are involved in mucus secretion so all these are helpful to reduce inflammation and they are helpful in different respiratory diseases so in this way corticosteroids are helpful in inflammatory or respiratory diseases expectorants expectorants are that kind of medicines that either enhances the secretion to dilute mucus or they are mucolytic mucolytic means they break down the mucus the drugs which are used are guaifenesin potassium iodide ammonium chloride and similar salts 
uh, which are which which dilutes the mucus or uh, which uh, enhance the secretion of mucus and when mucus is secreted more it will be diluted and after dilution it will be excreted out by cuff so they are not going to reduce cuff but they will enhance the cuff and they will uh, excrete out the mucus from our airways mucolytics Muc mucolytics are that kind of medicines uh, that uh, break down our mucus like a different bonding it will break uh, intermolecular forces are uh, like disulfide linkage and then it will be excreted out the examples of drug are bromexine ambroxol and acetylcysteine so these are the medicines which are used as mucolytic and they are expectorants xanthine drugs xanthine are their derivatives are used to relieve bronchospasm which is caused by asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary lung disease so xanthine drugs are aminophylline or duzalo which is dsc diphylline elixophylline allopurinol lophylline or theophylline so the function or mechanism of theophylline is discussed earlier that it is anti-leukotriene agent and it also inhibits the action of adenosine diphosphate diphosphate so in this way it acts as an anti-inflammatory drug so xanthine drugs are used for uh, different disease, uh, lung diseases so they reduces they act as anti-leukotrienes nasal decongestants nasal decongestants are those that opens our nasal pathways or our respiratory pathways so they are oxymetazoline pseudoephedrine and antihistamine drugs so antihistamine drugs are all nasal decongestants similarly nasoephedrine pseudoephedrine which is which binds to the opioid receptors is also nasal decongestant and oxymetazoline they are uh, available in the market with different brand names of the drug thanks for watching this video so in this video we discussed the mechanism of action of drugs that acts on respiratory system in our next video we will discuss what are histamines antihistamines and what are the allergic reactions and then uh, anti-inflammatory drugs and their mechanism of action so thanks for watching my video